welcome to another episode of TC Talk. Back today with another video, and in today's video, we're going to be going over some more spoiler cards uh, that got released this evening. Literally the second that I walked out to go to an event, the cards got spoiled, so I had to wait till I got home. So it's pretty late at night tonight, so hopefully you'll be seeing this tomorrow morning um, and kind of getting some information on some of the new spoiler cards. However, uh, LSS put out an article um, detailing the March... Um, the March promo kit, which they normally do once a month. They kind of show like the play mats, the posters, some of the new uh, promos that you can be winning with your local armory events. And for March, they put it out today and it featured a new card that we have not seen yet. Uh, Barbed Castaway, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, another card was also spoiled, a defense ranger defense reaction, which we'll also get to into. But overall, this like looks like a really awesome promo set. Um, being able to have the brand new bow is going to be really awesome for the winners. Uh, and I'm super excited to see that. I don't know how that works specifically because, like, you're going to get these promos before the set drops, right? If this is the March, uh, the March uh, promo kit. But regardless, it's really awesome to see. They have the three spiked cards, which we've already been see I already have been seeing in recent spoilers. And then we have Barb Castaway. So we'll get right into it. We'll talk about the two uh, cards and kind of get your thoughts on them as we go through it. So. The first one is Barbed Castaway, the two-handed ranger weapon bow. Uh, has two abilities. Both are once per turn instance for one resource. Um, and we'll kind of talk about like the use case for both abilities. There is a way where you'll be able to use both in the same turn technically, and we'll kind of talk about that. But most turns, you're going to be using one or the other. So the first ability is pay one resource. You may put an arrow card from your hand face up into your arsenal. So similar to Death Healer, except you don't uh, draw a card. Um, and then the second ability is also a once per turn instant one resource. You may turn a face down arrow in your arsenal face up. If you do, put a name counter on it. So essentially you're flipping it just like you would with Skullbone Crosswrap, except you're going to be putting an uh, aim counter on it. So initial thoughts is a couple things, good and bad. One, it doesn't draw a card like Death Dealer. Is it better than Death Dealer? Who knows? Um, that's kind of remains to be seen with how much aim counter support we get in this set. Um, my personal opinion, I think that this is going to be Riptide's like base weapon, like token weapon, like the weapon that associates with the hero, similar to how we saw the spider bites with the Rockney in the last uh, last two really um, promo sets. But so I think Barb Castaway will be Riptide's like token weapon, and you can just get the Cold Pool variant in the Armory uh, sets for winning your Armory. Um, Really, the two abilities are both really good, I think. One is a standard one, right? Load in an arrow face up. Um, but it is an instant speed, which is nice for like little things like getting around cards like Red and the Ledger, getting around cards like Spinal Crush, um, getting around cards that you know have to do with action points, right? Like you're able to now load with Azalea specifically, you're able to now load and fire off an arrow and gain around something when you only have one action point. Um, you know, anything that has to do with taxing action points or taxing, you know, playing action cards or actions themselves, this helps get around that. So that's really nice. Um, the second ability is awesome. Uh, being able to put an aim counter on any arrow that's face down, turning it face up and then putting an aim counter on it, it's going to make the aim counter builds a lot more um, consistent. I do think that this is better than Sand Scour Great Bow. What this allows you to do is basically, you know, you can change your play pattern up a little bit with how you arsenal cards, and hopefully I'm able to do a gameplay video for you all here the next day with my buddy Breezy on the, with this bow. But this is going to allow you to do two different things. It's going to have some synergy, actually, with cross wrap and the fact of you can either choose to arsenal like a three-block extender, like Levi calls it, um, or a pump like read the glide path or release tension or even take aim and be able to opt with, with cross wrap and then you know play it out and then load in an arrow as you see fit however you also are going to be able to now load in or arsenal in an arrow and be able to use it next turn and put an aim counter on it and before arsenal an arrow always it wasn't a horrible play it just wasn't the ideal play unless it's like a bolton shot because you're pretty much stuck with that arrow being there right like if you arsenal a remorseless uh, the next turn you can flip it to cross wrap and maybe get a dominated arrow, but basically that's the arrow you're going to, you're going to use, um, with Lexi, it's a little bit different, but with Azalea, Arsalina arrow kind of can limit your play lines, especially if you have a full four or five card hand, you basically use force to like burn Snapdragon scalers or burn like your, uh, perch gobblers or something like that. If you really want to go wide. So this is going to allow you to, you know, kind of play both sides. Um, 
What I also like about it is y there are turns where you're going to be able to use both abilities. Uh, I've given the example before, like if your hand is a blue, a Bolton, like a red Bolton shot, a pump, and then anything with the aim counter, we'll just say drill shot. Um, you're going to be able to uh, uh, play out Bolton shot. Um, well, honestly, what you could do, even if Bolton shot's face down, you could use cross strap, flip Bolton shot, just to see what's on top of your deck, play it out, um, you or flip it, uh, see what's on top of your deck, play out your pump, uh, whatever it may be. It could be read the glad path. It could be seek and destroy. doesn't matter. Play the Bolton shot. Let's say it's coming in for seven. If they let it hit, then you can reload in another uh, arrow, like let's say drill shot. Um, then use the once per turn ability instant pitching your blue to f uh, flip drill shot, putting an aim counter on it, giving it that piercing ability, and then fire it off, right? So you're able to basically flip twice in a certain turn if you if you can um, and be able to put aim counters on a lot more consistently. Where this hurts a little bit is the dominated arrow aspect. You're not going to be able to dominate as easily because there's going to be times where you just don't want to cross wrap, right? Like if, if you arsenal an arrow, you're basically almost, and it's an arrow that can get an aim counter and actually has an aim counter buff, you're probably not going to use cross wrap the next turn. So it can hurt you. And we're all we're saying all this without knowing if there's another good ranger headpiece, which might be coming. Who knows? Um, but regardless, it can make that a little bit wonky. But I do think with like the aim... Uh, support cards we already have, maybe a couple more. You have cards uh, uh, like Point the Tip. You have cards like Deadeye, uh, different cards that can give aim counters really well. Um, and then obviously you have Azalea's ability, like if you use Read the Glide Pass and things like that. I do think this has some solid synergy. It's going to be really interesting to see if, does this mean Riptide is actually the aim counter ranger, right? Like when Sandscour Great Boat came out, people were saying, oh, you know, typical ranger like Azalea is starting to get a new archetype with aim counter support. Well, maybe aim counter support all along was supposed to be Riptide's archetype, right, along with traps. Um, what's also cool about the traps is some, and we'll talk about this in a second, um, as we go into the next one, Collapsing Trap. This is a legendary Riptide specialization. You only can have one in your deck at Majestic. Uh, when this defends an attack with go again, the attacking hero discards their hand, then draws that many cards minus one. So one, just for anybody who's watching, traps, if you go and read the article on fabtcg.com, got eroded, which basically means like the original three traps, like tripwire trap, pitfall trap, and rock slide trap, I think is what it is. Uh, those three still have to be played from Arsenal, but as after those three, every trap from now on will not have to be played from Arsenal. It'll be eroded to where you can play them from hand, which really helps out the power level of these traps. But this trap is pretty good. Um, there's a lot of different use cases for it. If, you have, if you're playing against a hero like Phi, let's say, um, and they've played out a big turn, and let's say they just went and got a Phoenix Flame, and they have a Phoenix Flame and a Lava Burst in hand, or they just play out their Phoenix Flame, you don't even know what's in their last card in their hand, you can defend the Phoenix Flame with this card and then basically force them to discard their power card. Um, the one ruling I want to know on this is it says when this defends an attack would go again, the attacking hero discards their hand, then draws that many minus one. So if you defend when they only have one card in their hand, does that mean they just draw none? Um, any of you rule junkies out there, please let me know what you think. Uh, personally, I think they don't draw any cards, but we'll have to see. So it's some two really cool cards. I think the Castaway Bow is actually really good. I don't know if it's better or worse than Death Dealer yet, but I do know that I think it has use case. Um, and I think it's going to allow you to be a little bit more flexible with what you arsenal. You're now going to be able to arsenal good arrows just as easily as you arsenal um, an extender, as, as like Levi calls it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be doing a gameplay video to kind of give you my thoughts on it. Uh, hopefully I can get some good play lines and kind of give you an idea of some stuff you could do with it. But overall, like seeing this this uh, promo kit for March for Armories is really nice. Um, it's kind of cool if, if it is a case of them getting, you know, cards early, essentially um, being able to, uh, you know, just have people have their their um, their. Um, they're like cards early and also they're going to have updated versions of tripwire trap um of pitfall trap and rock side trap and even in you know it says right here when out when design outsiders we wanted to revisit traps to differentiate the two rangers the problem was we just couldn't get traps to have a state of playability because they have to be played from arsenal to date the only traps that exist are the three printed in crucible of war 
Uh, the card type has so much flavor to it, and the original three traps the cruiser wore are receiving a rata to change what was previously a italic reminder text. This means they'll continue to function as they always have and remain consistent with what is written on the card. So you're still going to have to play those three traps from Arsenal. There's a rata in like, what's on the actual card, uh, which will change it a little bit. Um, basically, instead of saying traps will only be able to be played from Arsenal, it'll say tripwire trap is only to be played from Arsenal, or pitball trap is only able to play from Arsenal. So, But future traps won't have to be, um, which is really nice. So overall, really excited for it. Let me know what your thoughts are on it, um, on these cards. I'm super excited, as you can see down for, below for the spoiler that we're going to be having on March 5th at 1 p.m. Eastern, so make sure you follow it to get updates on that. Um, and yeah, hopefully y'all have a good rest of your night and I'll see y'all next time on TC Talk. Thank y'all so much.